everybody out there. We're at the Schnook store on the hill, and I'm standing here with none other than Tom Kalora. How you doing today? Pretty good, Keith. How are you? Hey, you know, we've got a great treat for the folks out there today. We're going we're gonna to show the folks out there how to make your secret family recipe, the sauce for their pasta. Right. It's Sicilian spaghetti sauce, fat-free, straight from Sicily. <laughs> straight from Sicily. <laughs> we're going to go to the Bochi Club. Okay. We're going to go down there and uh, Luis Alamoni and uh, Tony Pensieri are going to show us how to play Bochi. If, but before we do that, Tom's going to talk a little bit about the, the produce in here, what's in season, what's out of season um, throughout the year. But uh, so io sono Quito Valentino e questa è Thomas Colora and questa è Casa e Cucina. Sit back and enjoy a great Italian-American show. Insieme una bella voce, siamo una bella voce, gente dalle anni, lavoriamo, mangiamo, beviamo, cadiamo, beviamo, festeggiamo, insieme una bella voce, siamo una bella voce. You know, we, we're going to do a lot of cooking on the show from here on out. So we're going to start off uh, with in the produce department at Schnucks with Tom Clora and Chris Lasseter, who is the produce manager. Tom, why don't you introduce us to Chris and talk a little bit about uh, some of the produce here. Well, Chris has been with us many years, that's for sure. If there's anybody who knows the produce business, it's Chris Lasseter. And uh, we've got some uh, unique things to tell you where, pro where produce comes from. Uh, and uh, I think Chris is going to tell you some, uh, what basically what's in season and what months they're in season. Explain a little bit to you that you might not understand about produce. Chris? Okay, right now we're in the uh, citrus season. So you can get all your Florida citrus and California citrus, which is at its best this time of year. And if you're tired of the citrus scene and the apple scene, uh, you can move into uh, the Chilean fruit. You can get all your summer fruits, peaches, plums, nectarines, grapes, uh, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. All this stuff is grown down in South America, which they're in their summer season. Hey, Chris, let me interrupt now. you here. Look at this. This is what Chris is talking about. This is this fresh peach. And uh, what we're going to do is cut a little piece off of here. We want, just taste that, Keith. What do you, tell me what you think. None of this is planned, folks. This is, this is strictly ad lib here. Yes, it is. Oh, it's delicious. Isn't it? This is from Chile, Chris? Right. This is from Chile. They, their winter season and our summer season are completely the oh, opposite, Chris. like Chris said. And this is the kind of product that you get. Oh, this is beautiful. Sweet. You know, so, so this is something to remember for the citrus. In the early part of the year, January, February, March, when it's winter up in North America, it's summer down in South America, so they get a lot of their, they get their citrus, so it's fresh, crisp, sweet, delicious from Chile. And it's tree ripened, and it's flown up here by jet, so it's tree ripened, it's picked ripe, it's not picked green and ripened here at the store. Now how often does the produce, or the, uh, let's talk about the citrus first, how, how often does they come into the store? We get a load every other day. Every other day, so it's fresh and it's in its uh, how you can say rotated. It's rotated. It's cold through. Uh, we try not to leave any bad product out there. You know, uh, the the citrus fruit is uh, you know makes a great presentation for your plate. If you want to put some some something around your plate or whatever the grapes or these apples. Now they come from Washington. Uh, yes, Keith, most apples come from Washington. Schnucks Markets has about 16 varieties of apples, and some now are organic, 
and uh, we'll explain to you a little bit later what, what, what organic means. We have the, Apples are like uh, the flavor of wine. A lot of people have different tastes for wine, and we've found that there's a lot of people who have different tastes for apples. There's sweet ones, there's sour ones, there's ones with different flesh um, color and, and, and different texture. And and sweetness, bitter. Right. And, and basically, you really have to taste an apple, uh, Keith, because an apple uh, could look bad on the outside, but be the sweetest thing you could ever want to taste on the inside. For example, a Fuji apple. Fuji apple was, over, was an overseas apple that we replanted into Washington, in the state of Washington, and it has a unique flavor that's just, my, it's my favorite apple. But to look at a Fuji apple, it's not real red and shiny, it's kind of a yellowish gold color with a little spots on it. But when you cut it open, the flesh is just pure white, and it's got a sweetness that's uh, as if you put sugar on it. Mm -hmm. Chris can tell you a little bit more. And Well, let's find out about the oranges now. The, the tangerines and the uh, different well, right where now, they come from. Right now you're getting you're getting a lot of your Florida citrus. You get your tangerines, your tangelos, and uh, their temple oranges are in. You can get Florida navel oranges, but then also you can get California navel oranges, which which are, they're at their best right now. You can also get a bunch of different types of grapefruit. We got grapefruit from Texas. We got grapefruit from the Bahamas, which is a real dark red star ruby grapefruit, and we've got grapefruit from Florida, which is the Indian River label. Uh, Chile is a, is a country in South America, and Chile is about the same length as California. So whenever it's winter in California, it's summer in Chile. And we have perfected now the soil over there, finding out that they basically have the same soil as California, and there is more farming going on and more orchards being put in than ever before. And like Chris said before, we have jet fresh fruit that is being flown in on a daily basis to the states, and the flavor is really very, very good in the middle of winter. Okay, now we're standing in front of the, uh, I guess the, the, all of the basic, your basic tropical, tropical fruits here. And I just wanted to point out, you know, the mangoes, the papayas, and, and, and the prickly pears, and so forth and so on, the plantain bananas. But you know, a lot of these, these fruits here are, Check this out, this papaya. This is beautiful for, for, for juices. And, and also, I wanna, I wanna, and I wanna stress this, is that when you spend a lot of time on a, a meal at home for your loved one or whatever, your, your family, and you wanna decorate your plate, with, if you have a grilled chicken or a broiled uh, uh, piece of fish or, or a steak or whatever, you can take a slice of this fruit and just decorate it, you know, and make it, a, a, a presentation is everything. And here, these star fruits are really good. If you trim off the, this, like, uh, just barely peel this corner at this edge off the star fruit, and then you slice it very thin, you'll have the shape of a star, and you can lay that around the corner, the uh, sides of the plate. Tom, your secret family recipe, I'm dying. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> a, a secret family recipe for a sauce handed down throughout the generations. Right. And I'm going to give you every detail today. You know, sometimes uh, when people give recipes, they keep some secret ingredient out. There is, there is ways to enhance a sauce by doing something different to the spice, which I'm going to show you today. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. While we go back there, let's take the folks on down to the Bochy Club. Hey, sounds and good. And tell them how to play bocce. That's, that's the Italian sport, that's for sure. You can play that at any age. Yeah, so when we come back from the bocce club, folks, we're gonna be in the, we're gonna be in the cucina, and you gotta check this out. Secret, Tom Clore's family secret recipe. That's right, in and down, thousands of years. <laughs> thousands. Thousands. <laughs> okay, folks, as I promised before, I wanted to start off 1995 with a game, the game of bocce. And I'm very privileged and honored to be standing here with one of the members of the St. Louis Bochy Club, Louis Salamone, who is also on the board of the, the United States Federation of Bochy, or to the United States Bochy Federation. That's it. You have it, Keith. <laughs> Louis Salamone, they also call him Peaches down here, and he's going to tell us a little bit about how to play the game of Bochy. Now, it's, it's a lot of fun. It is. It's a lot of fun, and it's very competitive when you get in the higher... Uh, Classes, it's a very competitive game and fun. Very relaxing game, too, isn't it? It is, it is. Very and, and a pretty hot-headed game sometimes, I, I understand. Well, some people are more competitive than others, but uh, very enjoyable. It's not like a game of bowling where you knock pins down or anything else. And again, Louis is going to explain this to me. They have measuring sticks and all kinds of things around here to assist 
in uh, making sure the game runs smooth. That's true. Well, first of all, let's talk about this court. This court is a synthetic court. It's uh, comprised of urethane and small rubber shredded chips. It's the first time, <clears throat> excuse me, it's ever been uh, attempted in this country. And uh, it's very durable, no maintenance. Tell us, about, what are these lines, these white and orange lines on the playing court? These lines designate where you throw a certain ball from. You cannot step, if you're shooting a ball, you cannot step over the second orange line. And there's the two different sizes of balls here. There's the larger ball, the bochi ball itself, right. and the smaller ball. Right. The, the small ball is the polino. That's the ball that you throw the big ball and try to get closest to. Now, uh, each side gets four balls. If you're playing single, you get four balls. Or if you're playing uh, uh, partners, four partners, you get two apiece. And uh, the object of the game is to get close to the little ball. And after all the balls are thrown, the closest balls to the little one get the points. And the maximum points you could get is four. But you very seldom get four, especially with good players, because uh, the good players know how to block you, and and uh, if you get an excellent point, they'll they'll knock it away. Now I noticed that in these courts here, you have these this system of keeping track of the score. Right. Now I can understand the one through sixteen. I guess there's sixteen points in the game. Right. Okay, and you got a red ball on the top and the blue ball on the top, who, uh, on the bottom, and whoever, whatever team has the different colored ball, you would move those over according to how many points they got. But you got one through twelve over there. What are the, what are those numbers for? Those are for league play. <clears throat> you play twelve frames, and who's ever leading after the twelfth frame wins the game. That's a speed up the game. Some some of these games uh, are so competitive that they they take a, two hours. Of, you know, if you if you just play to 16, they'll take two hours to finish. So this is the way that you play so many innings, and who's ever lead wins the game. Okay, now this is Tony Antonio Pansieri, yes. and again, Luis Salomone, and he's going to show us how to throw, uh, how some of the styles of uh, the bochi play. But before we do, I want to uh, ask you, 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 there's bochi tournaments all over the country, and you had a couple last year, one in Memphis, yeah, Memphis and, and, and Las Vegas. Vegas. And win Las Vegas. Now, what, tell me about your team. How'd you do? Well, t Tony and I were teammates and Larry Fusey Jr. And uh, we came in third in the country in the Rafa competition. And fourth in the country? Third. 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 We got the bronze. We got the, the bronze medal, St. Louis. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we're a little late starting in the Bochi, but we're we're uh, doing rather well. You know, we're trying to get where we get the the goal one of these days but uh, and this is this is not <laughs> nothing something to just uh, fluff off i would say it's something you guys take very very seriously oh yes we play every day to the jordan yeah Left, uh, in the afternoon a couple of games so. yeah keep up keep practicing and, uh, it's very competitive uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's get it, let's get into this game. Right. The first thing you do, what's the first thing you do when you're in play? The first thing you do is you throw this little ball. That, this is the Polino. They call it the Polino. And the object of the game is to get close to this ball. So you flip a coin when the game starts. Whoever wins a toss throws a little ball, and then he throws the first ball. One person from each team. Right, the two captains. So, they flip. <laughs> so I'll throw this, and, and then I'll throw a ball, and, and Tony can throw a ball. Y sole, na más arena ropa, na tempesta, del aria fresca, vale ya na festa. Sai pronti a re, sai 
Chef's Express. How you doing, Keith? No, pretty good. Hey, good. how about those guys? The Volo. They're yeah. going to demonstrate the Volo. They're fantastic. Yeah. I love I love watching those guys. They're oh. they're classics. They really are. Tony Panseri and, and Louis Salomone, two of the best bocce players in St. Louis. Speaking of bocce players and bocce and the St. Louis Bocce Club, they're hosting uh, the bocce national bo bocce tournament right here right. in uh, St. Louis. Right. We're one of their sponsors, Keith. Uh, everybody from the whole United States is going to be right here with the finale, I believe, being in Vera Park. Yeah, that's right. Well, there's going to be a couple of days down at Vera Park in, in the, what you call it up there at the, uh, the St. Louis Hoji Club. What a beautiful club. Mm. Listen, we could talk about this all day long. You got all these beautiful ingredients out here, Tom. And uh, one, one of the questions I have to ask before you get into the recipe, I know I'm dragging this out, folks, but it'll, it'll be well worth it. I noticed that every one of the products that you have here on the table has schnooks, schnooks sugar, schnooks salt, schnooks uh, the tomato product, schnooks olive oil, uh, and so forth and so on, except for the uh, eggplant, of course, and the uh, chobodi, and the alio, <laughs> the, the uh, orlet, but you see you got uh, schnooks uh, cheese, too. You know, when I come to the store to shop, and I always see this, I, you, I, I noticed that, okay, you get one brand, the, the, a brand name that you see on television all the time, and then you have a Schnucks can right next to it, and the, the price is lo a lot lower. What's the difference in the taste or the product itself, Tom? Keith, there is absolutely no di difference in the taste at all. This is the same quality that you can get in any kind of tomato paste or sauce that's on the shelf. And the best way to do this is, is to, to prove what I'm saying is a taste test. You know, what, what Grandpa used to do before we made the sauce was, in the old days, a lot of times the, um, the sauce wasn't sweet. So we, he actually took a little bit of the sauce and a spoon, and he made me taste it like I'm going to make you do here. Now, what do you think? Have we got a good flavor to it? Absolutely. So why, why pay more? Why pay more when you can have a healthy sauce for a cheaper price and use Schnucks products and it, the, the quality is unbelievable. If you have any question about some of these products, all you have to do is look at the back of them because all your n nutritional facts are on the back. Yes, all the fat content, the caloric content, the carbohydrates, everything is right on the back of the can here. And it's very bold print so you can see exactly what nutrients are inside of each can of Schnucks products. Now, now we've met Tom on the show many times before. And we talked to him about his family. He's very, very much proud of his heritage and culture and very much involved in a lot of uh, community affairs, uh, uh, especially the uh, Bochy Club thing that's coming up June the 3rd. Tom, your secret family recipe. Doesn't look like you have a lot of anything here different than, than uh, my uh, secret family recipe and probably a lot of other people's out there except for the Melanjani. Um, but it's probably the amount that you put in them. Well, as you see, as we get into the recipe, you're gonna see, yes, it's everything that you can buy right off the shelf, and everybody's got their one little secret thing that they do. It, with our family, it comes with the fennel seed. Now, those of you who don't know what fennel seed is out there, it's the long piece of spice that's inside of sozitsa, or it's inside of some spaghetti sauces. When you bite into it, it tastes like licorice, and it gives it that unique flavor. Well, what we do in our family is we take it and uh, and we take it and we actually fine grind it to a powder, so it blends in the sauce to give it this unique taste that's that's second to none. You can there's no way to describe it unless you taste it. So if you if you grind your spice up into a powder form, you'll have a much different taste, and you'll also need less of the spice because. When it's ground like this, it gets into the flavor of the sauce different than if you dump a whole piece of spice in there. Sure. You know, a lot of people make that mistake when they when they go out and they say, well, I'm going to do some cooking tonight. I'm going to cook Italian. But they grab, grab a handful of oregano, throw that in there, a handful of basil, a handful of basil, and throw that in there. And if the finocchio, the secret is, folks, a little pitch of this and a little pitch of that. Flavor. You don't want it to be overbearing. And that's not Italian by using a ton of oregano, I swear. No, the only thing you can do better to enhance this sauce, this is, I call this my winter sauce, if you would. To do a summer sauce, you would actually take tomatoes from your garden or from the grocery store, and you'd cook it down to get that, that fresh flavor. 
Um, the consistency in the sauce is brought to you with paste, and that actually reddens the sauce up, gives you a deep tomato flavor, and then you have the, the, the sauce that we put in there and the crushed tomatoes. When you add these two things, then you've got your basis for the sauce. So uh, what do you think, Keith? Will you give me a hand here? Oh, let's, let's go. Let's get down okay. here. Let's All get right, down. Here we go. Some, we're going to actually start putting this in like this, okay, into this pan over here. Pot, I should say. Keith, would you actually put some water in? Each one of these, when you dump your, your can in the, the pot here, you're going to add one can of water to size it. So we started out here with three cans of sauce. And then we're going with three cans of crushed tomatoes. <laughs> and then we're going to put in four cans of tomato paste for our base. How many uh, cans of water, Tom? One can of water for each one. So you want, you want to use each can different now because you want to actually get the tomato that's inside the can. Don't waste anything. That's how they did in Sicily, you remember? Keith? Oh, yeah. No <laughs> waste. There was no waste for no any waste. waste. You waste and you're out. You waste and you're out. Now, how many quarts does this make? Or should I say gallons? What we're is it? We're talking about three gallons of sauce here. About three gallons of sauce, Keith. Now, I'm going to do, I'm going to step on the other side. What we're going to add now is some of the spices. Here's the fresh onion. What you want to do is take the ends off of an onion like this. If you follow me on this, Bill, because a lot of people don't know how to really get an onion peeled quick. You just come into the side like this and you just peel off the sides of the onion. And it makes it go pretty quick. And when you're done, what you should do is always rinse your onion off in water. And it gets a lot of, so you don't cry a lot with the tears, that's for sure. Now, what we did for the sake of time is that we took that onion and we chopped it up. And what we're gonna do is add it in the pan right here. That's one onion, okay? Throw that in there. Over here is we use one clove of garlic, okay? Now, after you peel it off, get the husk all off of it. This is what it looks like, which is in front of you. Okay, now now the garlic is chopped. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got the garlic chopped. out of the way. And that goes, it's gonna go in with the chibudi, right? The right. onion. Going in with the chibudi right now. We'll take it over here. All right, now we've got the chibudi and the garlic mixed together. Okay, now the next thing is the eggplant. Is that an eggplant? That's, an, that's a Milanjani. I thought it was one of those things those ladies put underneath their shirts. No, that's okay, go ahead. <laughs> now, for the sake of time here, we're just gonna take off each end of it. And we're gonna peel off the outside skin. Okay, now what we're gonna do is just add this to the sauce. Sometimes you can saute it or you can add it to the sauce. For today's purposes, we're gonna put it right into the sauce. Okay, the next thing we're gonna add to the sauce is fresh basil go, basil. Ooh, fresh basil. basil. We're gonna take a little bit of that and just we're just gonna throw the whole thing. The whole sprig. The whole sprig right on in. Man, oh man. Now, in the meantime, Keith, we're gonna take the onion and the garlic. We're gonna add the rest of the schnooks olive oil to this to get a good saute out of it. And we're going to give it to Steve over here, who is our Chef's Express manager, to really saute it off to get the flavor. So you smell the flavor, and it actually gets into it. That's what it should look like before you put it on the... Okay, Bill, this right here is Primo Pasta. Keith, this is, this is the award-winning Primo Pasta. This pasta is used by all the famous restaurants throughout St. Louis and in New York and Chicago. It's a hard durum wheat. It comes from Canada. And you gotta remember when you buy this from Chinook's Markets in this store, we have it on the bottom shelf over here in our, in our pasta section that it's a two pound package. So don't just think it's a one pound like normal where you dump sure. it in the water, two pound package. Well, there's muscatellini, there's muscatelli, oh, there's spaghetti, 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 linguine. All kinds, all right? Now we've got a pot of that going off to the side over in the stove right now, but now this is the most important part. These are your main spices now that you're gonna be adding to. All right, the first thing is sugar. Now, as you all know, every Sicilian does not cook with the exact one cup of sugar. So we got about a three pound pot here right now, and I like a sweet sauce, okay? So we're gonna go one, and maybe two, well, how about not, three? Let's it, go three. It, it not only makes it sweet, but it also kills the acid. It makes all the acid out of the sauce. This is what makes your stomach uh, a lot better at the end of the day here if you're eating this kind of stuff that takes every bit of acid out. Okay, the next thing we wanna add is some salt. We got a box of Schnucks iodized salt, and we're gonna go a little bit more than a palm full of salt here. There's one palm, and maybe oh, almost, almost two pound, two pound palms. Palms. Of salt, not pounds. Now this is to, again to make three gallons of right. sauce. This is three gallons. So 
these are mint leaves. And what we used to do as a youngster is tie the mint leaves together to use it as a brush. Okay, we're just going to add a very little bit of mint. That's about it. Oh, man. Just a little touch, so okay? I probably had hit the whole thing. I want to ask you, we're at the Schnooks on the, on the hill, and you have a lot of specialty items. <laughs> what, what kind of specialty items, Italian specialty items do you have down here? Well, we, we, we really pride ourselves. And when we open this store up, Keith, we've got all the, the stores on the hill. For example, like, like Viviano's on Shaw Avenue. We've got Johnny's product all through our store. That's where the Primo Pasta comes from. We've got unique items like Cardoni, uh, those types of things throughout the store. Spadini, Brugioloni in our service meat department. We've got Brioche that is over in the general merchandise. We've got Pellegrini water. We've got certain Italian wines that a lot of stores might not have, but basically what you need to make this sauce, we you have in all your the neighborhood store, Schnook store. Sure. All the stores have it. But the uh, each store, has maybe something special for that area. Right. If you're on the West End, they might have um, those type items uh, that are blessed by the rabbi on that part of town. On this part of town here, we might have a lot of Italian items, ethnic items. It, it all depends what part of town you live in and what the culture of that area is that we is spread out on certain items in that store to, to please those customers. Listen, folks, if you need anything special, if you're looking for something special and you go to the store and you can't find it, always ask the manager. These people. If, if this is any representation of uh, who, what the other managers of the Schnook stores are like, uh, I don't think you'll have any kind of problem at all. Listen, Tom, thanks a lot. This Thank is beautiful. You. I'm going to munch Johnny down here, and I, I know Willie Mandolino will eat two or three bowls. <laughs> Go right ahead and enjoy. Manja. So, grazie. Grazie, grazie a tutti. Io sono Tito Valentino e questa è Casa e Cucina. Everyone, thank you for tuning in today, and thank you very much for watching. We're on every week. So until next time, ciao, arrivederci, ci vediamo, addio, ciao, arrivederci, ci vediamo. nel prossimo programma sì 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 è vero addio a tutti ciao arrivederci ci vediamo addio il Signore te benedetto